She played the violin in space. What came before the Big Bang and what created it? Um, and, you know, we have this expansion right now was where Hubble discovered that there is more than just one galaxy in the universe. What about black holes? What do you know about black holes? Black holes is where... One of my crew members from Polaris Dawn was with Kid and I. She, uh, she played the violin in space. She was raised since she was a toddler to be a, um, a uh, classical violinist. And um, ultimately she chose engineering and science and she, uh, she wound up uh, being hired as the, uh, as the lead astronaut trainer for SpaceX. She trained me for my first mission to go to space. And then I picked her to be an astronaut on, the, on Polaris Dawn. Um, and part of it was she was, she was gonna bring her violin up to demo uh, this, uh, this Starlink transmission where we basically created this flash mob orchestra around the world to raise money for St. Jude. And she is playing this wooden instrument floating in space and it's really cool. Anyway, I know it's a long story long, but uh, she was since asked to come and perform at an observatory in California, top of a mountain. It's this 100 plus year old observatory. And I was like, I'm definitely coming to see it. And this observatory where she was playing, which may be the coolest venue next to seeing her play in space, was where Hubble discovered that there is more than just one galaxy in the universe, right? So not that long ago, we thought it was just our galaxy and that all these stars were part of it. And then through his analysis and his research, he determined not only is there more than one, eventually there's trillions of them. And every one of those has who knows how many stars inside it and who knows how many planets inside it and how many of those are potentially inhabitable regions, right? We haven't even scratched the surface. So like, yes, you're, you're picking on a couple areas that we think we might be starting to know something about, but there is so much that we don't. And that's the appeal. I mean, it's crazy. I mean, even just the vastness. And, you know, I had Avi Loeb on uh, a couple of years ago, I think now, but, you know, we were talking about how, how <clears throat> everything is getting farther apart. Planets are getting yep. farther apart. Galaxies are getting farther apart. I mean, why is that happening? I think that's all, you know, part of what underwrites the Big Bang, um, you know, is the eventual creation of the universe and that everything is moving away from it. But that's, well, it's like that's where it ends because, like, we don't really know where it began either. Mm -hmm. um, what came before the Big Bang and what created it? Um, and, you know, we have this expansion right now. Is there a contraction? Again, <laughs> we don't know. Um, That's a damn good point. I never know, thought about that. Yeah, uh, it's um, yeah. I mean, we certainly know that the the universe is expanding. We we observe that. And, um, but now, yeah, is it expanding been... or is? I mean, that's what I want to know. If because if it's expanding, then that means there's an edge to it, right? So what's on the other side of the edge? Yeah, I I I mean, this is certainly. It's a hypothetical well conversation. I'm, but, I'm I mean, just curious what The expansion of the universe are. is w w what helps, you know, underpin the, the Big Bang Theory. But um, I don't, uh, look, I don't know where it goes. Um, I don't know what created it, what happened before it, um, or what happens next 14 billion years from now, you know. Yeah, yeah. What about black holes? What do you know about black holes? Black holes is where... Is what happens when, you know, really big stars eventually die. And, you know, there is just, you, you basically have such an extreme amount of gravitational uh, influence that not even light can escape from it. But then Stephen Hawking figured out some things do escape from it. What uh, escapes from it? Hawking radiation, actually. It's, it's named after him. So basically, whatever is consumed inside this black hole... Um, will slowly, over some extraordinary period of time, gradually radiate out of it, and the black hole will disappear like it was never there. That's, that's certainly the limit of my knowledge on it. I probably I butchered just, that up pretty good. But. I just love thinking about this stuff. It's just, yeah. You know, it's, 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 like I said, it's fascinating stuff. 
And this is like, that's what I was saying. When I, when I got nominated, I, my inbox just blew up from people all over the world that all had opinions and thoughts and some were appreciated and some really were not. And I would, you know what I was saying? I was like, there is no way the secretary of agriculture gets any emails like this. Like, it's like, I mean, but that's, what's so cool about it, right? Is like people do, no matter where you are in the world, at some point or another, you're lying back in a field and you're looking up at those stars and your mind wanders. And that's, it's such an awesome thing, right? Yeah, yeah. Would you, do you think more about your companies or more about it space? Uh, <laughs> well, you know, um, the company I, I started when I was 16 is what helped enable a lot of these things, a lot of these adventures I've been able to go on, my aviation career, my space career. Um, but, you know, when I was nominated... Uh, to lead NASA, I had to, um, you know, you do, a, you have to do a lot of separation from your kind of business affairs. So, um, my president of that company became CEO. So I'm like, I'm a kind of chairman of the board now, which means like one day a week, um, you know, a couple weeks, a quarter, I'm really involved, but the rest of the time, you know, I can be focused on other interests, which it, this past summer has been the first time in, since I was a teenager that I had no real professional obligations. It was kind of cool. And it, was, it felt really great to be able to, you know, still be young enough to have a whole new chapter, whether it was in governor, government service or elsewhere. Um, so, yeah, I guess I'd say, like, I don't put it anywhere. When, I, when it was my full-time job, it had to consume the majority of my thoughts. Now it does not. I mean, did you – I'm just, I'm just curious, business owner to business owner. I mean, how, do, how did – I mean – did that uh, create a tremendous amount of anxiety <laughs> to walk to walk away? I couldn't imagine just being a part of it a couple times a year. No, I um, because the company is in like a is in a really excellent place. Um, there couldn't have been a better time to get nominated for to go into a whole new direction in life. Like the business is killing it. You know, we have an incredible leadership team. Tons of firepower, lots of demand, good opportunity, good products. It was there was no better time to, you know, to be able to walk away and feel like, you know, what I helped create long ago was going to oh, was going to remain an enduring business and a good trajectory. So now it's um, it's not um, it's not like uh, if this was ten years earlier, if any other time when the company still had, you know you know, an equal number of challenges and opportunities where you're like, I, I don't want to risk things going off course that could hurt people's jobs and livelihoods, but it's in a good place. Good. You know, before we move into NASA too, I'd, I'm just curious, you know, how you raise your kids. I mean, it sounds like you grew up in w w what sounds like a, a middle-class, everyday American home. I mean, you've obviously done very well for yourself, created a couple of empires. You've been to space. I mean... What are you hoping your kids do? No matter where you're watching Sean Ryan show from, if you get anything out of this, please like, comment, subscribe, and most importantly, share this everywhere you possibly can. And if you're feeling extra generous, please leave us a review on Apple and Spotify podcasts.